So now I'm, I'm now going to get into the main part of the video. This is regarding the questions and queries that I've had as to whether Egypt is a good place to study dentistry or medicine. I only really know about dentistry or medicine, so I'm going to try and make this quick, sharp, and to the point. And this is also based on my experience and what I believe as well. So these are correlating to, to what I think about the country and studying there, okay? So let's explore the advantages of studying in Egypt. So first of all, I have stability, okay? So if you are looking to move to Egypt, if you are Egyptian and you want to live there, um, when you settle down, if you want to be a dentist in Egypt, then it's a very good place to practice and study dentistry. This is because it's quite a stable profession in Egypt um, compared to all the other jobs that you could be doing in that country. The demand for oral healthcare is actually quite high in Egypt. There are a lot of potential cases that you could be working on. As I said before, there is quite a lot of poverty in the poorer areas. Um, however, there's a lot of chance for excelling in like cosmetic work in the nicer areas. So it definitely does depend on where you're living in Egypt and what kind of patients you want to be seeing. Job prospects for dentists in Egypt actually do remain quite strong. So this is a good advantage of studying in Egypt and wanting to practice in that country. However, I would only recommend it if you are Egyptian yourself, if you speak Arabic, or if you are familiar with the overall lifestyle or culture of that country. The second point as to why Egypt might be good for you is affordability. So studying in Egypt will definitely be a lot cheaper than studying in Europe. Um, I will do a comparison video about studying in Europe later i'll probably do that next week please stay tuned on my channel and everything because i will be posting about it so egypt will be a lot more affordable as far as tuition fees go if you are doing like the credit mainstream system if you're doing one of those which is usually available in state schools i can't remember about private schools you will have to pay most likely a fee on top of the tuition fee for the credit system because the credit system usually gets smaller classes you usually get more attention from the teachers um you usually get like a better timetable and there are from what i remember opportunities for resets there's more opportunity for reset third thing you will get more clinical exposure hands down if you are in egypt and especially if you speak arabic if you speak arabic and you're actually wanting to study in egypt I personally, if you messaged me and asked me if this was a good idea, I would definitely say yes. Why? Because you can speak the language and this means that you will get a lot of clinical exposure in your clinical years, okay? So this means that you'll be seeing a broad, varied range of different cases. The good thing about Egypt is people do come in for free. A lot of the poor people get a bus to the university and they actually come in for free to the clinic at the university to get their teeth done by students. So this is a brilliant thing and it really does ensure that there are enough patients per student. They're so desperate to get their teeth looked at that they they don't care if you are just learning as a student. They really don't care. Life out there, you'd be lucky to get. If you are poor and you get a dental appointment, you are lucky. They are so thankful that you are working on their teeth. So I think it's a really good system that they have there, to be honest. Dentistry aside, if you go to Egypt, if you study there, you will be fully immersing yourself in that rich historical culture of Egypt. Egypt is an absolutely amazing place. It's breathtakingly beautiful. And this provides a really stimulating backdrop for learning. It's really important when you are studying in Egypt, when you are living there, to immerse yourself in the culture, in the language, in the way that people live. Try and learn a little bit more about that country. Maybe learn something about their culture or the religion that some of your friends believe in. You know, you should always try and be open-minded if you are thinking about moving to such a different country to the UK. So let's talk about some challenges for studying dentistry in Egypt. If you did message me and you said to me that I don't speak Arabic and I haven't ever been to an Arabic country before, then I'm not sure what I'd say. I think I would say to you to research a country more. To look into whether you are the type of person who can really be confident in a different environment be bold enough to push through when times get tough because Egypt is not easy. If you're thinking about studying there, it's really not going to be easy. It'll be a good challenge for you, but it will not be a walk in the park. You'll have to learn the language, especially if you don't already know it. And you will have to definitely learn about the culture. There are a lot of things that are seen as disrespectful in Egypt. I had to make sure that I was always being modest. Regardless of whether it was boiling, baking hot outside, I still had to dress very modestly. I wanted to do this for myself because I want to respect the country that I'm living and studying in. 
So it's really up to you. It is personal preference, but if you messaged me and you told me that you don't speak Arabic and you've never been to a country like that before, then I would be inclined to say, maybe look into other countries besides Egypt, maybe look into Europe, only because you don't know the language and this might be a hurdle for you. It might make things a lot more difficult. Um, from experience, yes, it does make things a lot more difficult if you don't know the language. Quality assurance, okay, so while some universities are quite high standard, others may lag behind with that standard. So if you're wanting to study dentistry, it's very important that you choose quite a good university that has quite high standards, especially if it's a state school. Um, all the private universities are relatively good for dentistry, from what I remember. But again, even if you're choosing private, if you're choosing state, you should always do your research and check that the university has the right facilities that will work with you and with your learning style. I attended Ain Shams University. It was a very good university. However, it was quite small and I'm not sure if going to Cairo would have been better for me. So you must be very careful as to choose like high quality education when you are choosing your university. So Arabic is obviously the primary language of instruction in Egyptian dental schools. With Ain Shams, they did teach it in English. However, because there was such a huge number of Egyptian students, um, there weren't that many foreign students, foreign from non-Arabic countries, I mean. So there weren't that many non-Arabic speaking students. Therefore, they did teach a lot of their classes in Arabic. Um, so it might be better for you if, you if you go to a private university where there will be more foreign students. However, if you go to a private university, just bear in mind fees will be higher for you, okay? And you will definitely need to have learned some basic Arabic by the time that you hit your clinical years. No one's going to have any sympathy for you if you turn up to clinics and you don't know how to communicate with your patients. So in Europe, this is actually a question I've had regarding Slovakia, uh, where I'm studying now. In Europe, yes, I do have to practice Slovakian. Um, and I'm learning Slovakian right now, but they actually incorporate that into the university system. So we have to pass Slovakian in order to continue with our dental studies. In Egypt, this is one thing that I would actually say they should incorporate. They should incorporate Arabic lessons, compulsory Arabic lessons into the curriculum because we essentially can't graduate unless we've passed all four sections of Slovakian language. So it should be the same in Egypt, in my opinion, because Arabic, why wouldn't you want to learn Arabic anyway? I mean, I personally, because there was so much happening in Egypt, it was very difficult for me to find the time, a lot of the time, to learn Arabic because life got so crazy. I know no other languages apart from English, so it's really not that easy for me. I was really trying sometimes to pick it up, but it just was not easy at all. So. But I do believe that if it was incorporated into our curriculum as compulsory, a compulsory subject, then I definitely would have put more effort into learning Arabic. So that was my overall points, guys. Thank you so much for listening today. I really enjoy talking to you guys because I do feel as if I can still help people who are wanting to go to Egypt. I'm a fully white Scottish person and I was able to move to Egypt and I was able to survive three years there. I would have still been in Egypt now if it hadn't been for the situation of the ORE exam. I personally wanted to move because I knew that I would have to sit the ORE exam after I graduated in Egypt and I knew that it would take too long and I knew that it would be too much money for any of you guys wondering. So I didn't leave Egypt because I hated it. I absolutely loved Egypt and um, I would still be there if it wasn't for my situation. But just feel free to message me, reach out to me anytime. I mean that. And I love you guys. Thank you so much for supporting me so far. Thank you and I'll speak to you later. Bye guys.